Welcome to part four of our Celebrity Infinity Cruise in Greece and Turkey. We are now on day five of the cruise. It is a sea day and normally I don't like to give ship tours on sea days because it's too crowded. But remember, this cruise was only sailing at about half capacity. So I thought, what a better way to spend the day but doing a ship tour. We are starting at deck 11 at the front of the ship. Remember, this is a winter cruise. Not that it's too cold in Greece, but it was about high 50s, low 60s every single day. That's why no one's really out there. But I would say, even if this ship was packed at full capacity, I cannot imagine that there would be any trouble getting an outdoor chair to hang out in. Last July, Gary and I sailed the same class of ship, the Celebrity Summit, and it was packed to the gills. But even so, it was easy for us then to find an outdoor lounge chair in a good location to sit and read all day. And while I've been chatting, we've made our way inside to the Constellation Lounge. If you saw part two of this Celebrity Infinity Cruise, this was where we watched the second part of the sunset when we got too cold to hang out outside. This is also a club that has live music, comedians, magicians. During days, especially port days, it can be very mellow. So it's a great place to come and find a seat by the window and read. And on the other side of the elevator, you come to the camp at sea or the kids club. I think I maybe spotted five children on this entire cruise. So did the kids club employees even have to work? Are you a kids club employee on Celebrity Infinity? Let me know in the comments below. Like, did you get a week off to do almost nothing? As you can see, the red area indicates a running walking track. And now we're basically walking around the perimeter of the pool. One flight above, of course. As we gaze on down to the pool, you can see there are people sunbathing. I just want to say I got the sense that the majority of passengers were from the UK. I have heard that the Brits love their sunbathing and they were not lying. 60 degrees, you guys, 60 degrees. And look at all these people just having the best time around the pool area. We've now moved on to the other side of the pool area as we head on more towards the back of the ship. And no, your eyes are not deceiving you. There are four hot tubs in the pool area. I've been on larger ships with only two, so I think four is a pretty good number, especially considering the ship holds 2,100 passengers. Of course, there's also more in the solarium. Here's a little basketball court area. Or what they're playing. What is that, you guys? Let me know in the comments. Gary and I know nothing about sports. Wait, that's a lie. Gary's obsessed with American football. But otherwise, we know nothing about sports. Is that pickleball? Let me know in the comments. Here we are entering the rooftop terrace and on the Celebrity Summit, this was our absolute favorite area to hang out in all day. You have these cushiony seats on the side with a little bit of shade. And then as you go around to the back, you have loads of big plush couches. This is because they show movies up here over there. And I was surprised to see people watching movies. Again, it was too cold for Gary and I, but hey, if it doesn't bother you, have at it. So as not to disturb the film, I'm sneaking around behind everything to the very back of the ship. What a view. Could you stand and stare at the wake of the cruise ship all day long? Because I could. I find this so hypnotizing. Let me know in the comments below. We went around the back and we're on the other side of the basketball slash pickleball slash volleyball slash whatever you want it to be court. And we're walking towards the elevators on the back of deck 11 on the ship. And it looks like 
They are closed. I feel silly. Yep, definitely closed. So we'll go down to deck 10 the good old fashioned way. We come down into the pool area, but remember we're more towards the mid slash back of the ship. So we'll just go right into the buffet. Before we're all the way in there, that place to the left is the pool grill. You can get burgers, fries, hot dogs, typical American food, and it's all included in your cruise fare. And I don't know why this is so dark. Not much to see, it's a hallway leading to the buffet, so let's skip ahead. We are entering the buffet around lunchtime, and I'm gonna walk you through it. We are starting from the left side near the entrance, and then we're gonna walk all the way around. And if you're confused to as to why I said, oh, we're gonna walk all the way around, because most buffets on ships these days don't utilize their full buffet space. You have these mega ships with four, five, six thousand passengers now, and they are literally only stocking half of the buffet. Every single station was open at this buffet. Obviously, since we were traveling at low capacity, there were always loads of seats available. Now let's talk about food quality. Gary and I have had buffet food from four cruise lines, Norwegian cruise lines, Royal Caribbean Cruise Lines, Princess Cruise Lines, and Celebrity Cruise Lines. Compared to Royal and Norwegian, it's miles better. Now, if you've been on Icon of the Seas and you're about to chime in, well, I was on Icon and the food was way better than this. Icon doesn't count. We all know they upped the buffet for Icon of the Seas for the first few sailings. I'm talking about your typical Royal Caribbean sailing, adventure of the seas, oasis of the seas, whatever. Now, compared to Princess, I think quality-wise, Princess slightly edges Celebrity out, but on the Emerald Princess cruise we did in September, the ship was full, and again, they only had half of the buffet set up. So I'm going to give the award to Celebrity for Bus Buffet we've had so far simply because I don't like getting into fist fights over a couple of chicken fingers. Would you rather have the buffet be less crowded but the food quality slightly lower or would you like to go into a battle just to get a hot dog on your plate? Let me know in the comments below. And I missed it in this video because it was super dark but Towards the left side of the entrance of the buffet, there is a whole ice cream slash sorbet station, and it's all included with your cruise fare. All right, here you go. The pool area, super nice pool area, always very clean. Again, we can't really judge the pool area because it was too cold of a cruise to really hang out there too much, but we did get to go into the outdoor hot tub later in the cruise and we had a blast. Okay, headed back towards the front of the ship and the solarium. You guys, this is a sea day. Look at all the spots in the solarium. It was the Hunger Games to get a spot on our Celebrity Summit cruise in July. And also, if you recall, a major issue I had with it was there was no enforcement of it being an adults-only area. Obviously, since there was only about five children on this entire ship, that was not a problem at all. And this became one of our favorite places to hang out also in the solarium, I was talking, but I showed you the spa cafe where you can grab little snacks to eat. Okay, I am now sneaking video while the thermal spa is empty. I'm playing this video on slow motion because I have so much to say about it right now. Whenever Gary and I cruise Norwegian Cruise Lines, we always pay extra for the thermal spa. And we always have the most amazing time in it. Even on their older ships, like Norwegian Gem, we love the thermal spa. As you can see, this spa is kind of small. There is no hot tub in it. They had a heated stone bench, but no heated chairs. Now, 
If you get this spa included in your cruise fare, I think you get it. If you are aqua class, you can go there whenever you want. That's great. That's a nice extra perk. Enjoy it. No matter what the sale is, do not pay extra to go to this thermal spa. I don't remember how much it cost us. It was heavily discounted. We only went two times and then I begged for a partial refund. The first time we used it, I left my bag with my book on it on that bench to reserve a spot. We went into the steam room, which was not working, so we were there for about one minute. When I came out, someone had moved all my stuff around. There was absolutely no seats at the bench when we had entered. The bench was half empty. And you could be saying, Lori, you can't reserve spots. Well, first of all, if I'm paying extra to sit on a hot bench and read, why can't I reserve a spot? Secondly, is leaving for one minute really reserving a spot? Third, why does a place we paid extra to utilize have so little room to sit? Again, I repeat, this cruise was half full and you don't have enough seats for everyone that paid extra to be here second time we tried to use the thermal spa we came in it was completely empty we went into the herbal steam room which comfortably seats two if it was four good friends you could probably all squeeze in there gary and i were in there for again less than a minute when another man entered and asked us to move over there was no way this man could have sat in there without touching our bodies. We were all in swimsuits. It would just not be a comfortable fit. We told him we had just entered. We would only be two more minutes and he was insistent. He would not leave. Maybe it's a cultural thing. Maybe he was from another country where it's common to just squeeze next to each other in a steam room, but I am not about to be skin to skin with a stranger. Between this incident and the regular steam room not working the day before, we went to the spa desk, pleaded for a partial refund and received it. Have you ever been in the thermal spa on the Millennium class ships? Do you hate it as much as we do? Let me know in the comments. Also, how are the thermal spas in the newer celebrities ships? Are they way better than this? Is there an actual hot tub? Are there individual seats? Let me know in the comments. To reiterate, this spa had one bench, two steam rooms, one that only fit two people really, and one sauna. Anyway, okay, I'm done with my spa tirade and I'm ready to move on to my fitness center tirade. I was today years old when I realized I did not take tour footage of the gym. So I'm gonna use this video footage of me training in the gym to talk about the gym. Let's start with what I liked about the gym. I loved all the cardio equipment. It all faced the window. I had stunning sunset views as I was getting my steps in. I also liked the staff. They were really friendly and nice. And as you can see, I'm training my yoga slash flexibility here, and they had great equipment for that. They had good yoga mats, they had good yoga blocks, and good floor space. Two things I did not like. Number one, I complained about it on the summit. I'm going to complain about it again. There was no pull-up bar. Yes, in saying this, I realize I am probably one of 1,000 people that could possibly even care that there was no pull-up bar on the cruise ship, but it is such a common piece of equipment and one that I need to stay in shape to teach aerial silks, which I do for a living back home. Number two, I paid for unlimited fitness classes and their fitness class times and offerings sucked. I know what you guys are gonna say. Lori, why didn't you look at the class schedule before you paid for it? You guys, I did. I glanced at the first three days of the class schedule and they had either three to four pay for classes per day, both in the morning and at night. But after that, it went down to maybe one or two a day. And sometimes the one or two a day were super early in the morning. We never really got over our jet lag. So I was not up to taking 8 a.m. classes. And then I had no other pay for class offerings. 
Also, all they really offered for an extra fee was yoga and HIT. Clearly, I love yoga, but HIT involves a lot of cardio and jumping around, and I have a bad back. Of course, the teacher was great and made modifications for me, but in the end, I paid $99 and I only took three classes. At $20 a piece, I lost out. However, this was my fault. I did not ask for a refund. I promise you I am not an entitled Karen. I have been in the service industry for years. I'm just saying I wouldn't pay for unlimited fitness classes if I were you. We've moved down to deck nine. This was the deck our room was on and the reason I'm bringing you here is because this is the internet cafe. I said this in our last video, but we were a few doors away from the internet cafe and our internet went in and out. When it was in, it was extremely high speed, great for streaming, but we constantly completely lost all signal. All right, I went all the way down to deck three and now we're gonna work our way back up from here. We are now in the back of the ship. Here is the conference center. Nothing too exciting. Sorry, I can't get in there to show you. But here's something interesting. I always thought you had to walk up the stairs to deck four to cross over to go down again to get to guest services. But you can also walk through that area with staterooms and you'll end up in the middle of the ship. And the first thing we see across the way here is the Tuscan Grill. We didn't end up going to the Tuscan Grill. I'm not the biggest fan of Italian food. I also watched a lot of other vlogs about it and I heard it's good, but nothing super special. On my right here is the shore excursion area. You would come here to book or ask questions about any future shore excursions. And then I believe that doorway in front of me is the destination concierge. Don't quote me on that. I am doing the VO approximately three weeks after the cruise. And then in front, we have guest relations. To the left of guest relations in my POV is the captain's club. Beyond that, we have the midship elevators. And then directly to my left is the grand foyer. I feel like I have to speak in a super low voice when I say that. Grand foyer. And as we walk around to the midship elevators, I want to say that there is some great seating by the windows behind them check it out and while i'm showing you this can we ask you guys to please hit the like and subscribe button with the notification bell on this channel has kind of become a little passion project for us making these videos for you has brought us closer together as a couple we would love to have more subscribers like you to engage with that being said we've made the rounds we are back at tuscan grill all right let's say we go back to the back of the ship, that's a lot to say, and up to deck four. Right here is trellis, which is the main dining room, and this is the entrance for if you do not have a dining time. Across the way is Lumine. Lumine is the restaurant dedicated to the sweet class on Celebrity Cruise Lines. Speaking of sweet class, Gary and I could kick ourselves for not placing a small bid in the bid up program. With such an empty ship, we probably could have gotten a suite at a great deal. Ah well, coulda, shoulda, woulda. We are now in the Rendezvous Lounge. Lots of seating here, great place to listen to live music. Also, when we did the summit and the ship was at full capacity and we had to wait about a half hour to get a table in the main dining room, we were given a buzzer and were able to come in here and enjoy a drink and the music until we were buzzed through. Also, you can sit in the main area where all the action is, or if you prefer a quiet evening with a glass of wine, you can grab one of these plush couch seats on the side. Making our way through a hallway as we enter the grand foyer, but from the fourth floor. And I'm trying to show you some of the neat art they had all over the ship. It was very random, but cool. All right, grand foyer time, deck four. To the left are the midship elevators. Loads of seating and often in the evening, there would be live music. We're walking up to the martini bar here. 
in our last video i got a lychee martini from here it was excellent and then this smaller bar is crush and this is what celebrity says about crush crush is a cool classy setting featuring an ice filled table center an eye shaped seating area that is quieter and not directly looking at the bar tenders and this brings us into the casino Whenever I show the casino, I always feel a little guilty because Gary and I don't really gamble. We don't know that much about it. I've been watching so many cruise vlogs lately talking about how you can win free cruises simply by utilizing the casino. Oh, the gig is up. Gary took this video on a different day. That's me filming. Anyway, you got your tables, you got your slots. One thing I can say about the casino is it did not smell smoky, so we liked it for that reason. And also, the aisles were fairly wide for when we had to pass through it. We like that because sometimes there can be a traffic jam between the theater and the grand foyer. Here's the art gallery, pretty typical. And then there is the photo area. You can now look at and purchase all your photos on the app, which is super convenient. And then this white kind of alcove lounge is the retreat lounge. Us? Jealous of the retreat lounge? No. It actually appears that there are no windows in this retreat lounge. Is that true? Please let us know in the comments below if you've ever stayed in the Celebrity Infinity retreat lounge here is the other part of the photo gallery and then some more of the art gallery to our right so this was weird in a sense that it felt like the art gallery and the photo gallery kind of blended together even though they were separate we are walking down the hallway towards the theater and not going to go into the theater in this video because we have shown plenty of footage of it in our other videos. Please check them out. Gary had the mission of filming the promenade on a port day. Let's see how he did. This has been a great cruise. We have the rest of this day and then tomorrow is the Acropolis back in Athens and at only 50% capacity. There's room for everything and seating for everything. Most of the times when we go in the hot tub, Lori and I are the only ones in it. Isn't this beautiful? It's nothing like cruising. This is number 14 for us. And we have 15 and 16 already planned I'm trying to be as steady as possible because I got a bum knee <laughs> but it's okay I may have to turn around up here I'm not sure looks a little congested maybe not See if I can sneak through here. I don't think I'm supposed to be here. Nope. Not supposed to be here. See? <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> I think I'm breaking the rules here. We'll see. Maybe there's a maybe there's a way out. I don't think so. I'll go until somebody kicks me out. Excuse me? I'm sorry. So sorry. Oh. He didn't stop me, so. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No. Nope. No, nope, I think that's it. <laughs> I thought it went all the way around. Thank you. Thank you. He gave me permission. <laughs> Okay, here we go. He said it was okay. 
I think I'm somewhere near the boiler room. Oh, jeez. Nah. It's blocked off. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, I'm good. I'm good. This is a little freaky. Here's where I am. There's the, uh, if you want to walk the plank. There it is. Oh, geez, I know I'm not supposed to be here. Oh, well. We'll continue on. Continuing on. Yeah, I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> oh, well. Hello. How are you? <laughs> And let's hear it for Gary Marichek, you guys. Taking the promenade portion of the ship tour very seriously. Kids, do not try that at home. Back inside, let's make our way up the stairs, looking at more weird art, headed to the fifth floor in the forward part of the ship. We come to the balcony portion of the theater in the front. And we're at the Emporium now, which is the area with all the shops. For the size of the ship, I felt like there were a lot of shopping options. You had a few jewelry store options, one with watches, one with actual jewelry. Then you had a shop that sold alcohol and snacks. You had a big store with celebrity branded merchandise, a purse store, and then other clothing boutiques that were not celebrity branded. I can't believe they had a Kate Spade. I feel like that would be the kind of store reserved for a bigger ship. So I was really happy and surprised to see that. Oh, how could I forget? There was a perfumery slash makeup shop. The shops were kind of set up in an oval shape with some display cases on the sides. And as you make your way past them, you first come to a little set up area that sometimes the shops utilize to sell extra merchandise. And then you come to the future cruise vacations area. Gary and I could just kick ourselves for not booking our next celebrity cruise with them. Right now we're booked on a princess cruise and then two royal cruises, but we want to do a celebrity cruise in Alaska in May or June in 2025. Have you ever done an Alaskan cruise with celebrity before? Was it amazing? Was it awful? Please let us know in the comments below. All right, we've made our way back to the grand foyer area. This is the pay for gelato station. I'm sure it was really good, but the buffet had great ice cream sorbet options for free too. So we hardly ever saw anyone there. Across the way is Cafe El Baccio. That is a pay for coffee place, but the snacks here are all included. And I can tell you with certainty, the quality of the cakes and the cupcakes there were much better than the buffets. So you may want to head there for dessert instead. Hey, you guys, who is this handsome fella? Where were we? Mm. <laughs> it's beautiful, doesn't it? Yeah. This is a great view right here. I love it. Yeah. All right, babe. Come on, baby. Yeah. All right, back to work. Loads of seating near Cafe El Baccio so you can drink your coffee. And then we come by Cellar Masters, which is the wine bar. They had live music here too on occasion. It would be your softer, more low key, jazzy style music. And you would have to walk through the wine bar to get to Sushi on Five, which is the pay for sushi restaurant. Everything on the menu here is a la carte. We did eat here on this cruise and we will show you in the next video, so stay tuned. 
Here is the actual bar portion of the wine bar. And we are walking through to the second level of the Trellis Main Dining Room Restaurant. This is where you would enter if you had a regular dining time every night. And as a reminder, we are now on deck five aft. Across the way from Trellis is blue. This is the private dining room for passengers staying in aqua class cabins. It serves a healthier spa style cuisine. Going to show the menu, pause if you want to check it out. And this concludes the ship tour portion of this vlog. Just want to finish up part four or day five of this video with dinner in the main dining room. Let's look around the main dining room. So first, this is giving me Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom vibes. Anyone else? Secondly, this is how empty the main dining room is at 6.30 p.m. on a sea day when the ship is only sailing at half capacity. Have fun. I'm in heaven. Gary and I usually both order the same things on the menu. So tonight we both started with beef carpaccio. The best beef carpaccio we've ever had was at Chops with Royal Caribbean. But this celebrity main dining room beef carpaccio held its own. Well, a cruise would not be complete without... Shrimp cocktail. And here we go. Mm. Delish. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it Thank is. You very much. How, what, uh, how about very the How about the size? The size, not too good. Small. Yeah, small shrimp, but really tasty. Yeah. The short rib. Um, and I'm about to have my first bite, so cut it, cutting it a little bit here. It's it's soft and buttery. The rib just like melts in your mouth. Excellent. And this concludes part four of our Celebrity Infinity Cruise vlog. We have one more part to go, part five. In part five, we're gonna show you Heraklion and then Athens. In Athens, we went to the Acropolis, which is the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. Oh well, almost. So please hit the like and subscribe button with the notification button on. The notification button will let you know when our next vlog is out. Until the next time, we hope you all live your best cruise life. Bye-bye.